or should we say good morning, students? Oh, I missed that. Uh, this is the Joko Cruise 2023 class. If you are here for a different class, you are in the wrong classroom. Uh, welcome, everybody. So happy to see all of you. I have a question. How many of you are actual first timers? Whoa! And you already knew the principal supported it. That's I, impressive. I have a more fundamental question, and this is no shame in this. How many of you don't know who this person is with? <laughs> so we go forward with all of these assumptions. Yeah. You know what happens when you assume. Yeah, you make an ass out of me in front of everybody. Yeah. <laughs> This is Vice Principal Colton. <laughs> Vice Principal? I can't be superintendent? Do you want to be superintendent? I don't really want to be superintendent. I don't think you want to be superintendent. Nobody likes the superintendent. superintendent. <sighs> John Colton, a singer, songwriter. <laughs> Thank you. I don't, need, I don't need your pity. I don't need your pity. He'll take it, but he doesn't need it. I can't believe there are people in the audience who don't know who the hell I am. <laughs> What has happened to young people in this nation? <laughs> uh, my my follow-up question was going to be, how many people have cruised before, don't need any sort of orientation, but are here for strange uh, completist purposes? <laughs> <laughs> but even split, that's good. That's Do good. all the things. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, wow, we're on a cruise. We are on a cruise. It's happening. Even if we didn't want it to, it uh, is happening. And that's all you need to know. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. This is Johnny Colton. It's his cruise. Have fun. And this is Paul. Hi, I'm Paul. And this is Storm. Hi, I'm Storm. Together they are frequently known as Paul and Storm. It's easy to remember. And then there's a, there's a fourth uh, member of our, of our party uh, who cannot be here because he is doing legitimate, difficult work somewhere else. His name is Elijah, and we are leaving that microphone empty for him, as well as the space in the middle of the venue. His, his name is Drew. I would like everybody to give a round of applause for Drew. I know he would want to be here saying hello to all of you as well, but instead he's uh, pushing road cases around in the hold. Very glamorous life. I mean, it's for, you know, with purpose. He's not just pushing them in a circle. No, he just it makes it feel more comfortable that he can just push some road cases around. Yeah, like those mazes that send you around. Exactly, exactly. Um, so, welcome to the orientation. We are going to walk relative. Well, first of all, Jonathan, I know, has some has to go re remember how to play all of his songs. <laughs> He's got about 90 minutes to do it. That's so, right, that's right. everyone say thank you to Jonathan. He's going to walk off. Thanks for being here, everybody. I hope you have a great week. And Storm and I are going to get real with you. <laughs> can, can we rap a little? Just going to sit down and just really get real. You know, what is a cruise really with the people on it? You know what? I don't like this. It's too uncomfortable. Well, I'm stuck here. So. I'd like being in a, in a position of power, so I'm going to stay out yeah, here. My, my ankles could do this once every 15 minutes, so I'll be up in a moment. So um, we're going to walk relatively quickly through a lot of the questions that many first-time attendees have. Uh, if at any point you do have a question, wait until we get done, because we may address it. But at the end, once we're done going through everything, we'll take as much time as we can to answer as many other questions as you might have. Please feel free to come on down. Eventually, first question, which is one I, I had, certainly, there will be chairs put in here for the actual shows. They had to, we basically, we bring in extra folding chairs, we take out the existing ones, they put this floor in to cover the trip points, and they put in a bunch more folding chairs to increase the capacity in this room so that we can actually do two shows and get everybody the opportunity to get into it. So it's not that we don't like you, I mean, we don't necessarily like you, but th this space is not because we don't like you. If we don't like you, it's just because we haven't met you yet. That's right. Uh, so uh, I'm going to stand over here so you can see as much of the screen as possible. Uh, very first question, the safety drill. For those of you who have been with us on previous cruises but not last year, this, is, uh, this process has improved a good deal since before. Back in the back in the days, in the before times, 
The safety muster drill was a thing where everybody basically stood around on the outside of deck three for about a half hour while they talked you through all of the safety procedures. People would literally pass out. <laughs> yeah, it happened. Uh, and now what they do is there is a roughly three minute video that you can watch. Hey, my phone's ringing, how about that? I hope it's not something important. It is, but I can't answer it right now. <laughs> um, anyway. We'll see if that rings again, in which case I'm going to turn this over to Storm. Uh, now there's a video that you watch in your state room. I believe before you watch the video, you should go to your muster station sometime before 3.30, if you have not yet. And what I mean by that is you go to deck three, to uh, the middle of deck three, and on your key card, which all of you have some version of this, it'll have your muster station. It'll be either an even or an odd number, and they will send you to the port or starboard of the ship, depending, and there'll be a person that will scan your key card. Everybody has to go through that process to uh, state that you understand and have watched or will watch the, the safety video. It's only about three minutes and it walks you through the whole process of what happens in the event of any emergencies or alarms, which will not happen because this cruise is going to be absolutely perfect. But all of which is to say, if you have not gone through the muster uh, scanning process yet, go do that now, because we're not going to do anything particularly important for the first five minutes, but you do, everybody needs to do that by 3.30, so please they, take care of that if you have not yet. They will actually hold the ship up. They will, or what they'll do, do is that. they'll track you down, they'll start calling people's names, and it gets really embarrassing. Um, so uh, go through that process, and uh, we appreciate it. The Jovo Cruise is built around, uh, among many other things, but certainly initially and primarily around our various official shows and events, which constitute main concerts, which happen in this room every evening. Uh, there are more on those in a second. Then there are other official events, that is, that our various performers and writers and guests on board have scheduled that are events other than the evening main concerts, which happen at various venues throughout the ship. Then there is the Shadow Cruise. Who has never heard of the Shadow Cruise? Wow, okay. that's fewer people Great. than, uh, <laughs> than, than New Jonathan Colton, I think. Yeah. <laughs> the Shadow Cruise it grew organically out of uh, you all, and people very much like you, where we turn over a great deal of our space and schedule time and venues out there to our attendees who organize and run their own events. Uh, and it is listed on our schedule. There's actually more Shadow Cruise, cruise programming than there is official programming on the cruise, which, given this pace, by Joko Cruise 20, 20, like, 31, it's just going to be all Shadow Cruise, and we can just, like, sit and drink all week, which would be pretty nice. That's kind of like now. The newest aspect, uh, which, again, you all may be new to us, uh, but it's new to everyone, regardless of what you've been back before, is this year we are, in, as we speak, constructing a stage on the back deck, of, on uh, deck nine, the Lido deck. That area is called the Sea View deck, so we're calling it the Sea View stage. There will also be shows throughout the week on that stage, and uh, it's an experiment for us. We've seen it happen on other cruises, and we think it's pretty cool, so we hope you will enjoy it as well. Uh, where can you find the schedule? Various places. Uh, you can go to our SCED page, uh, jokocruise2023.sched.com. You can access that without purchasing an internet plan. It's been allow listed on the ship's uh, network. So if you just connect to the ship's network, you don't have to take the extra step of purchasing an internet plan, uh, but you will be able to reach that. Among them, you can also reach jokocruise.com, and there's a couple other sites the ship allows. I think the New York Times page and things like that. Yeah, it's a standard. But as long as you're uh, sort of officially connected to the network, you can always access the SCED page. Also, there are schedules posted throughout the ship uh, in, in all the um, elevator bank areas. There's a daily, there's a big blue banners that will have the daily schedule posted within it. Uh, there are digital signs uh, peppered around the ship that uh, have it, and also a physical schedule is dropped off in your stateroom every evening with the next day's uh, Joko cruise schedule printed in it, among other things. And these will all be updated throughout the week. Inevitably, there are some things that move around, so you'll definitely want to check in on that, even if you have everything printed out and set up just yeah. to be certain. Yeah, it's always a good idea. 
Uh, now, the, as we mentioned, the dinner and main concert events, as you all should be familiar, because this theater holds about half the ship, half the, half the crowd has access to the main theater while the other half goes to eat dinner, and then everybody swaps. Uh, the red team, how many red team folks we got in here? They have dinner first, which usually is at 5 p.m. Today is at 5.30, uh, and then at 7.30, usually tonight at 8, come in here to come see the show. And then the gold team, where's my gold team at? <laughs> gold team comes to the first show, they're the responsible ones. They see the show, then they get drunk. Red team arrives ready to party, having already partied. Double parties. So the gold team does the, the early show and then goes to dinner. Uh, to attend the main concerts, and only the main concerts, make sure you have your badge and lanyard. Your lanyard is colored the same color as your team. That is what uh, allows you into this room to come see those shows. Uh, the one uh, different uh, dinner schedule on Wednesday, the day that we are in San Juan, because we're in San Juan all day, instead of two set dinner seatings, they have what they call open dining, basically between 5.30 and 9.30. You can show up within that window uh, if you want and eat dinner. That said, the ship does ask that you generally try to arrive around the time of your dinner time, because if the entire ship shows up at 5.30, the kitchen's going to be real mad. Uh, and also there won't be room for half of you. But that's the basic, sort of the, the basic evening swap for the main concerts and dinner, how that works. Shows uh, from all, all the events that happen here in the main theater will also be simulcast in the BB King Lounge. If you want, they're also simulcast on your in-room TVs and then the next day, the previous day's events from here will be made available via on demand. So you can go back and rewatch something, or if you slept through something or missed it, uh, you can always go back and access those. Oh. Yeah, uh, brand new this year, the uh, red team show of each main concert is made available the next day also as a captioned uh, version. We can't do, because the internet doesn't work here, all the live captioning options involve needing a, you know, a, a hefty, internet connection, so it, it's a bit of a process, which is why it takes, we're, we're actually, we burn the captioning into a separate version and make that available separately, and that's why it takes so long, but we, uh, we'd like to, you know, try and make that available for people. So to get that one, it's not like an option where you turn captioning on, you will see an option for the previous night's show, captioned version. Yeah. So, uh, and thank you all, I mean, it was, it was people, it was our attendees who suggested that we try to make something like that happen, and we are happy to do so. Um, this generally has not been an issue over any of the Joko cruises, but just because it is technically our policy, we reserve the right to clear this room out or any space out between events so that you can't sort of Comic-Con style camp from 9 a.m. so that you can see the uh, Twilight panel at 4 p.m. with Robert Pattinson, but which is not happening here. Anymore. Anymore. <laughs> we, he, he said uh, we couldn't meet what he called the right price. Um, and also he's Batman. Uh, you all are new cruisers. We try on day one, which today is, to have a number of events geared towards encouraging new cruisers to join in on various activities. One such is uh, the new cruiser karaoke event, which happens in BB Kings. Uh, this evening, I want to say 9.30 or 10, it starts where everyone's allowed to attend, but we encourage that uh, only new cruisers uh, take shots at singing at that event. There's a number of other karaoke events throughout the, uh, throughout the week. Also, they, we're having a new cruiser dance party uh, in the evening on the back deck. DJ Riz Rollins, who's going to be with us uh, all week and has been a mainstay on Joko Cruise, will be spinning dance tunes. And you can check SCED uh, to find other official events and or shadow events that are geared towards new cruisers. There's some speed meeting events uh, through the week and things like there's that. There's some tabletop events. Yeah. And tabletop is a really great, great way to meet people in general. Yeah. Uh, let's see. If you have questions or need assistance, we have the Joko Cruise Ambassadors, uh, our army of 
helpers and volunteers who I believe will be wearing pink sashes as they go about their business on the ship. They're a very good resource if you see someone with a pink sash to ask if you're you know, lost trying to find where a particular event is or where a particular room is. They should be able to help you. You can always go to the Joko Cruise Info Desk, which is in the atrium, which is at the center of the ship, on deck one, the big sort of open area. There's a desk to the side there. It has a sign, Joko Cruise Info Desk. This is different than the ship's main ship services information desk, which is in the atrium as well, but on the opposite side, and it's very obvious which is which. That one is called guest services. Guest services, sorry. Versus yes. our info desk. So basically, if you have any questions relating to your stateroom or ship-related things, or uh, your questions regarding dinner, if you have dietary needs you need to discuss with someone, that's go to ship guest services. If you have anything relating to Joko Cruise or our programming itself, go to our info desk first. That, that would be, you'll get the uh, best results with those starting points. Like any large event and convention and things like it, we have a code of conduct uh, that is very important to us and to our attendees. Everyone, uh, the performers, uh, us and our crew, and all of our attendees are subject to it and are expected to abide by it. And we uh, thank you, everyone for their cooperation. Uh, it has been available on our website. It is available in the uh, little unfoldy uh, Z card, it's called, uh, that you should have all received. Uh, if you have, uh, if you either are subject to a code of conduct violation or witness one and you wish to report it, there are report forms available at our info desk on, uh, in the atrium on deck one. They can be submitted anonymously if you wish. There's a, a box where you can drop them off or you can speak to someone in person. You can contact any helper or staff person. The, the helpers, the ones with the sashes, or uh, our staff people. Also, our ship listener, Anna Bean, who is here somewhere. If you could stand up and wave, Anna. Oh, here she is. Hi, Anna. Anna is available as a resource for you all. She is our first point of contact for code of conduct issues, but also if anyone needs someone to talk to regarding an issue, maybe it's not even code of conduct related, but you're having an issue or a crisis or something that you need to speak with someone with, Anna is available. Her number is the, the number that is listed for the code of conduct, 74501, that gets to a phone that is on her person at all times. Know that she is a resource available to you. Uh, and we thank her for... Uh, for being with us again this year. And we're sorry that her flight was delayed. Yeah, she was one of our one of our latecomers. Uh, let's see, so as mentioned, there's a lot of tabletop gaming on Joko Cruise. This is another thing that grew organically very early on. We threw a cruise that was just kind of a music and comedy festival. And a giant stack of board games just appeared. appeared. <laughs> they apparated in the middle of the ship. Uh, but no, people brought their games and we realized this is a very important part of our attendees' culture. And so we have nurtured it and encouraged it and now we bring a literal ton, or is it two tons? We, bring, we, can't, we, we can't count the tons anymore. So many tons. We bring a lot of games. There's a whole extensive game library that is in, on deck three in the main dining room. It is available 24-7. Even while dinner is happening, you are welcome to go to the game library and uh, check out and check in games. You can game pretty much anywhere. Uh, that there is a flat surface or a rough surface that you don't mind things falling around on. <laughs> As you note about the game uh, library, we also have the cardboard concierge folk that if you aren't familiar with the games, that's fine. Like, they are ready for that. You just can go in and say what kind of game you want to play, or if you really don't know, they'll help you find something that you'll enjoy. Yes. Uh, you can game the main dining room. Basically, when they are not setting up for serving or breaking down from dinner, which is roughly 3 or 3.30 through roughly 9.30 each night, the main dining room is open for gaming. They clear all of the tables. There's just tablecloths, and you can go game there pretty much anywhere with a few exceptions. Uh, when we have like a specialty lunch, the specialty Indian lunch happens in there, and there's the afternoon tea. There's some sections of the dining room that will be unavailable during that. There are also a number of tables, I think it's 10 or 12, dedicated full-time, 24-7 to gaming. They have very large stickers. They're larger than I thought they were when I placed the order. You know what, 18 inches is a big circle, <laughs> turns out. But it only helps, I think, it makes it very obvious which tables they are in the starboard aft section of the Lido. 
if you don't know your port from start yet, it's okay. You'll find it's the one with the gigantic it's the one with stickers. the huge stickers on them that say that this table is reserved 24/7 for gaming, and so you can use those at any time. Basically, if someone is eating, if you are eating at that table, and somebody comes up and, with a game and looks at you forlornly, forlornly, you are required to get up and leave that table. The, the stickers detect food. It'll start to glow menacingly. Yes. <laughs> there is a tentacle on the sticker. Uh, and then basically, as we say, anywhere that there is a table, or depending on the sort of game you're playing, a space that is not otherwise occupied by an official or shadow event, have at it. Uh, and as the previously mentioned Sked has all the various gaming events that are scheduled by our, uh, our gaming team through the, through the week, and also there's many, many Shadow Cruise events. Speaking of gaming, we also for the past number of years have had console gaming directly above us up on deck 11 in what is usually called the EXC Center up in the Crow's Nest area or 10 Forward. We now have an entire area dedicated to console gaming, everything from old school uh, NES systems through uh, some PS5s, I believe, are up in there. Yeah, they, they got it pretty much all. And they also run a, any number of different events and tournaments throughout the week. You can check Sked to find out what's happening there. Also, Storm DiCostanzo, keeper of the old school arcade. <laughs> Right up on deck two, just kind of outside of this theater, in the billboard onboard bar area, we have, what is it, 10, 12? We have 10 standout machines. Uh, most of them are our originals. We have two pinball machines, one where we need to pick a lock to get it to work. <laughs> yeah, this is new this year, pinball machines on a moving ship, baby. That's right. We have researched how to disable every type of tilt device. So we'll work it out by the end of the week. And we also have two cocktail units, so those are accessible too. So yeah, very easy to get to. And those are also multi-cades, 16 yeah. one. So all my Gen Xers get to relive our childhood. <laughs> Crafting is also a very big part of many people's Joko Cruise. Uh, the ship's digital workshop, which actually turns out at this point they have gotten rid of all the computers. It used to be the Microsoft workshop. Now it's basically just a room with tables in it. But we take that over and it becomes our crafting space at, uh, throughout the week where our crafting team... Oh, go ahead. Our, our crafting team, they, they craft what looked like Microsoft products. Yes. That was the, that was the deal we got with the ship. Um, so they, they throw any number of workshops in there through the week. The uh, attendance is, is first come, first served, and they're pretty, pretty high demand. So if that's a thing you're interested in, you may want to line up early for a given event. Uh, but there are also uh, two other dedicated crafting spaces right around there. There's a, a sort of the front corner of the main dining room. Like if you come out of the crafting room and go into the main dining room and turn left, there's a batch of tables there that are gonna be marked for, again, other than during dinner. Uh, crafters can go there and craft their crafts. And also the Explorer's Lounge, which is, if you go out the, uh, the digital room and turn right, there's a space with a number of tables and chairs there where we took out all the low cocktail tables and, and most of the sofas and put in actual special tables. Special crafting tables. Yeah, special crafting tables that we crafted. I just out, love of, out of the old computers. Yes. It used to be in the Windows room. Yes, they're built out of Microsoft surfaces. Uh, but anyway, so there are, uh, and uh, the crafting room has any number, uh, like any number. Why am I keep using that, that space? It has six. Six supplies. <laughs> that's, uh, that's any uh, number. That's any number. Uh, no, we have a whole bunch of crafting supplies, and uh, they have some sewing machines and, and all sorts of things, and uh, it's, it's super cool. It's great to see all of the various crafting things that kind of grow around the ship. And that's not a thing that's new, but for folks who were here before, we were able to expand the areas for crafting. So thank you for your feedback on that too. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you need a space that is not your cabin, but where it is quiet and there's not so much stimulation and noise and activity. And we have a couple of dedicated spaces on board uh, as quiet zones. This year, the daytime quiet zone is up in the Tamarind Restaurant, which is in the middle of the ship, up on deck 11. Uh, one half of that restaurant from 10 until 3, uh, the, it's with, they'll clear the tables and you just can go and sit there. Uh, and we ask in the quiet areas, you know, please no gaming or conversation, uh, or keep it to very low conversation if, if you're in there. 
Uh, and also in the evenings from 9.30 p.m. until whenever the starboard side of the Lido marketplace is in the buffet area. We try to keep the sort of center area of that. It's the side where that closes down basically as a, you know, they, they shut down the buffet on that side so it's a little quieter and less activity over there. Uh, so that's another space you can go to if you just need some place to, to chill a little bit. Um, so that are those. We also, uh, for uh, the second or third year in a row, have made a good number of the restrooms on board gender inclusive. Uh, the, as you might guess, the gender inclusive uh, restrooms are open to users of any gender identity or, or expression, and each restroom is, has signage which indicates what type of restroom it is and also what facilities are available inside, if there are just stalls or if there are also urinals. Um, we also have a map, I think it's on our website, and also in the Z card, the unfoldable Z card, that maps sort of which restrooms on board have, are, are appointed for which type. So that is also a thing. We talked about the shadow cruise. Uh, how many people, by show of hands, are running a shadow cruise event this year? All right. Awesome, and thank you. And all of those like you. We're very excited about it. Again, it's a thing that just sort of, as we say, grew organically. People wanted to do things like the Storm was saying the first event that we remember. It was iBell Phone Choir because iPhone. I, I, iPhone Bell Choir. Yeah. iBell Phone Choir. iBell Phone thing. Choir. I haven't eaten today. <laughs> but yeah, iPhones were brand new. And I remember that a group asked, can we, I don't know, is there some way we could do a little Bell Choir because there's an app? And we're like, yes, of course you could do that. And an app is a piece of software that they make for a mobile device. I know not many of you are familiar with technology, but... You can learn how to craft them later in the week. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be crafting some apps later. Um, so look around for the Shadow Cruise. It, it, they're, it's super cool. It's just about anything you might be interested in. There are probably some sort of event relating to it. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to make some use of that. Uh, our performers, many of them on board, hold what we call office hours. Those mo often will get scheduled more of them will get scheduled as we go through the week. It's sort of a less formal, less structured kind of hangout, a bit of interpersonal time. It's not supposed to be an autograph session. It's just, you know, it'll be things like, come see John Scalzi in the Ocean Bar from four to five and grab some drinks and chat about space or whatever. The first ever office hours was John Hodgman had asked, I don't know, can I just hang out in the hot tub and talk with people and I'll call it office hours. So we said, yes, you can do that. And he did, and it was wonderful. So here we are. Uh, so those opportunities, as I say, uh, in fact, I already have a couple that I need to add to the schedule, which I can't get because I'm busy doing this and other things, but eventually, if you keep an eye on the sked and the printed schedules, you can see uh, different performers and guests' office hours as they appear on the schedule. The internet on board. <laughs> it is better than it was. That is not really saying much. It is certainly slower than you are probably used to at home. It is satellite internet, we are on a moving ship, so we are constantly adjusting and or losing our connection to a given uh, signal. It will drop out with annoying frequency, but not necessarily regularity. But usually exactly when you really want. Yeah, just when you hit send. Um, and I'm not, I don't mean to imply it constantly drops out, but it is not, like, you're not going to have a robust, constant signal all week. Also, the ship is full of 2,000 nerds. We did, we did ask them, and they did supply us with more internet juice for the week, so we're, we're better than a typical yes. sailor. Um, but it is there, and the ship, uh, the Holland America offers three different pricing tiers of social surf and premium that are allegedly different levels of speed, but also different levels of access to things, things more streaming-oriented, things like YouTube and Netflix, neither of which will really work on any of the levels, including premium, um, well. But only on premium do you get access to those kinds of streaming things, and particularly, as we've mentioned in an email, uh, Google documents and Google Calendar and things like that are only available through the premium internet level. So if you must access those things this week, either make them available offline before we sail and lose our signal to the land, 
purchase a premium uh, internet plan or just plan to connect to them in the ports of call. Uh, San Juan is a U.S. territory, so all of the major carriers will have normal U.S. Uh, connectivity there. Tortola, if you have international calling plan available, uh, activated on your particular plan, it, you should be able to connect to uh, the networks there. Some carriers can connect to uh, on Half Moon Key. I believe my AT&T has always connected, but I'm also told that Verizon has a lot more trouble and we can't speak to the other carriers. But there is some degree of content connectivity on shore. You're not off the grid completely unless you want to be. Uh, also, some restaurants and bars and such will have Wi-Fi available to of various speeds and quality, so that's also an option. Or you could launch your own satellite. Still waiting for that. But please do not do it from the ship. Yeah. <laughs> or while we're watching. Um, that said, nerds like you and like us, being who you are, uh, attendees built <laughs> and support a uh, attendee created social media platform that runs off the ship's network but doesn't require an internet connection and it is of course because pirates called twit R. Yeah, that's, that's the proper response. It's, you know, it's, it's a social media messaging system like Twitter. There's also group messaging or text messaging and things like that. They, you also can get access to the schedule. Uh, you do not need to purchase an internet plan and if you should have all received a code via email and or instructions when you boarded or in your room. If you didn't, you can always get a code and instructions down at the Joko Cruise info desk. Many cruisers use it to varying extents. You are welcome to, but you are not obligated to. You won't miss any like official announcements that are only on Twitter or anything like that. But it is a uh, thing many people do enjoy. That said, this year we are putting official announcements, including the morning announcements given from the stage, so that if you weren't at the show or you want to have them available as text, we will be placing them there as well as the other places yes. where they appear. Uh, and also, as previously mentioned, the SCED page, the jokocruise2023.sked.com, is always accessible via the ship's network, but don't need the internet for that. The 531 rule, which we learned from our good friend Will Wheaton, please. Oh. Good afternoon, everyone. May I have your attention, please? It's the captain. This is Captain Ewan Bynes speaking from the bridge. And on behalf of the entire Amsterdam team, welcome on board. Before we depart, it is important that we review some essential safety information. First, we will now sound the general emergency alarm for your information only. This alarm is seven short tones, followed by one long tone over the PA system. of your assigned master station and instructions on how to put on your life jacket can be found on the inside of your stateroom door. The life jacket can be found in a compartment inside the wardrobe in your stateroom. And your stateroom attendant can also provide instruction on how to correctly don the life jacket. As a reminder, your life jacket goes on like a vest with the buckles loose and facing forward. Insert both buckles and tighten the straps until the life jacket feels snug around you. Then securely tuck away the strap ends. For your information, the medical center is located on deck A, that is Alpha Forward, and is accessible by taking the forward elevators or stairs. 
The business hours of the medical center can be found on your state room television. And if you experience a medical emergency, please dial 911 on any phone at any time. Finally, if you haven't done so already, you are required to watch the Safety at Sea video on your state room television. Thank you for your attention, and we trust you enjoy your cruise. Thank you, Captain. Yeah. Uh, so, as mentioned, we learned this rule for our good friend Will Wheaton, who's on board with us this year <laughs> at any convention-like event. Please follow the 531 rule, which is, hold on a second, every day please try and get five hours of sleep, eat three meals, and take one shower or bath. <laughs> treat yourself well, and that will help treat your fellow attendees well. We all can get a little right by Thursday or Friday. A little bit. Uh, speaking of people who deserve to treat themselves well, the aforementioned fourth partner of Joko Cruise, it's true! Hi everyone. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Drew. Are these new people? These are the new people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hello. And, and the old people who just didn't feel like going anywhere else. They love us that much. They hoped Drew would show up. They're, they're young at heart. They oh. are. Yeah. I didn't mean old people, I meant previous attendees. Yeah, I'm sure you did. None of us are good at words. You never understand. Cancelled now, Paul. Still terrible. <laughs> are the uh, road cases all pushed around and in the right places now, Drew? Well, what goes up must come down. All the road cases have come up, and now we're pushing them back down. Okay, great. Yeah. And then, 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 then they stay down. Yeah. Well, until they must come up. Yeah. <laughs> and after that, they must come down. <laughs> That's how physics works. Uh -huh. I get it. Yep. Uh, you can stand out here while we finish through these slides and then help us answer questions if you want. Ooh. Or you can go do anything else. I, unfortunately, I need to go do anything else. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, but it's very nice to meet all of you old and uh, young and hard people. Sure. Thank you, Drew. Let's talk about fear of missing out. It's easy to have on Joko Cruise. I did the math last night. We have 244 hours of official programming, not counting things like dinners. We also have 256 hours of shadow programming for a nice round of 500 hours of things happening on the cruise this week, or 20.8 days of stuff within these seven days. As you can see, because you are all smart people who understand mathematics, you literally cannot do everything on the cruise. There's lots of stuff we all want to do, us included, that we are not going to be able to get to, and it is okay. We like to think of it as it's not so much that I'm missing a bunch of stuff that I wanted to go to, as there is always something going on that I am going to be interested in, and I have all these opportunities. So. We understand if we could somehow program an event like this, you know, if we could, pro if we could program a three week long cruise that just ran in, s in sequence, we would do it, it would be very expensive, and we would all be dead at the end of it. <laughs> We've run the numbers on it. <laughs> and it turns out you would not like it as much as you might think. <laughs> um, because, as noted, dinners aren't built into that timeline. <laughs> So, so the F and B budget on it is really low. Yeah, that's true. Um, but you know, as, as we say, don't feel alone or discouraged if you realize you're just up against all of this stuff and you can't do everything you want to. It's cool. Just pick one of the things that you do want to and concentrate on enjoying that. And don't worry so much about the things that you missed because also, if they're a main concert event in here, you don't have to have missed it because you can watch it in your TV later. Uh, and also, speaking of that, don't be afraid and in fact, plan to have some time where you don't do anything. It's, it's easy again to get caught up and not save time for yourself to reset and relax and just chill a bit and nap or whatever you need. Take that time for yourself and it is okay if you have missed that one thing. Yeah, give yourself that sorbet time. <laughs> To cleanse your event palate. <laughs> sorbet time! Last call for a sherbet. <laughs> Stand back, 
back in your lounge chair. Wow, E-52s do that song. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's that. Health precautions. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. We're in essentially a closed system. And things like the dreaded norovirus word uh, are a potential threat. And the actual disease. And an actual disease, not just a word, it's a way of life. Um, and it is very good to get in the habit of washing your hands regularly and thoroughly. There's all sorts of bathrooms around here. You know how washing your hands works. There's probably a shadow event on it. So. Yeah, there's also hand sanitizer stations everywhere. Pre-pandemic, this was a little bit more novel of a note. Now it's weird when there's not a hand sanitizer station every nine feet. Or following you, like the road. You'll see robot hand sanitizers throughout the ship this week. You will not see it. Angrily that. chasing you and spraying you down. Um, but yeah, just, you know, as you're walking into the, the Lido Buffet or, or to go get uh, pizza at the pizza place, you know, grab some hand, grab yourself a little hand sanitizer. Give yourself a little party in your hands. Yeah, yeah. And treat yourself to some handy sandy. Do what you can to not go nuts touching your face because it is one of the easiest ways to transmit things like norovirus to yourself. Um, you know, maybe, you know, do the elbow bump maybe more so than a bunch of hugging and handshaking if you want. Whatever you are comfortable with, set the tone how you are comfortable with is what we are saying. Uh, what if you feel sick? You should. You can visit the infirmary. The ship has an infirmary. Uh, that is available 24-7. Uh, they have, for example, the, the front desk, even if you're, if you're feeling a little nauseous, seasick, because it can sometimes get a little more boaty, as they will describe it, than you may be used to, especially if you're a first-time cruiser. The front desk has numerous remedies available, um, and if things get worse or if you are otherwise unwell, the ship's infirmary uh, has options for you. Our masking policy this year is the same as it was last year, which is masking is required indoors in all public areas. Uh, that is not in your stateroom. Uh, thank you. Unless you are actively eating and drinking. Uh, and by that, for example, if you are here in a concert and have a drink, doesn't mean just yank your mask off and slowly nurse your drink for 20 minutes. Just pull it down, take a sip, put it back up. We appreciate everyone's abiding by the policy and helping everyone aboard have a safe, uh, and enjoyable a cruise as possible. Uh, in the outdoor spaces, uh, masking is not required, but if you are in a situation where social distancing is hard to maintain, like you're crowded up against the aft deck stage, you may wish to mask at that point. Um, the Lido pool area, the, the pool in the center section of the ship, will be considered an outdoor space unless weather requires them to close the roof for any extended period of time. Uh, and generally speaking, because, you know, people can talk about, is this a gray area, is that a gray area, etc. The idea is just be considerate and use your best judgment when going out and about. The phrase that we have been using internally is exercise common sense and common courtesy. And we should be fine and have a great cruise. Right? Yay! <laughs> Thus ends the slides. Uh, if you don't have any questions, you, it, feel free to, no, you're welcome to stay, but feel free to leave at any time if your questions have all been answered. There's plenty more to do on the ship. If, before you leave, though, I do have an announcement to make. Um, the sail away party, the, basically the aft deck stage that we were talking about that has been getting built, is still being built. So there's a lot of equipment and stuff out on the deck. So. The aft deck bar will still be available, but there's not, if you can, we're, we're closing down the aft deck area, basically, other than around the bar. So the Sail Away Party, which involves uh, Riz Rollins do, uh, playing some dance tunes and such, will be happening in the Lido uh, pool area, the middle section we talked about before. You also, if you want to go watch Sail Away, also, if you go up to deck 10, uh, you can see, you know, Florida go by as we so sail on the ocean blue. We, which is actually a very cool thing to see, especially as you... Yeah. Uh, so we apologize that the aft deck area will not be available for sail away, but we're very busily trying to make uh, a show happen back there. Uh, so but that will be ready soon enough. Also, uh, we were supposed to have a pool cover over the aft pool 
for that, so people could stand there and watch the show and not fall into the pool and, while they're trying to watch a show. Turns out, um, math doesn't always work. Yeah. Uh, there were some measurement issues. And now we don't have a pool cover. So right now there is an empty pool out there. But tomorrow, they're going to refill the pool, and the pool is going to be a pool for the duration of the cruise. Which will also be part of the performance venue. So. Yes. So if you really wanted to watch a concert while also swimming... Which also means our concerts will require the buddy system. Yes. Let me, yes, let, it, let us revise that. If you wanted to watch a concert while swimming safely, <laughs> it's gonna be a thing. <laughs> Make it a cruise happen. Uh, so yes, yeah, so the part of, uh, the sail away party is 4.30 to 5.30, that uh, we actually sail at about five, uh, but that is now mainly happening in the Lido pool area and not the aft deck, but uh, still gonna be a party. All of that said, now, if you have a question, raise your hand and we will do our best to answer it. Shout it out nice and loud. Fellow pointing to who is wearing a hat. Up in the back. Where is the lost and found? That is the uh, guest, guest services atrium deck one. Yes, that's the ship's guest services desk, the big desk with people standing behind it, right in the hotel. Where is the child lost and found? Uh, same place. Like, like there's, it's a bigger box behind the desk <laughs> than the one for like hats and stuff. But yes, if you have lost a family member or a child, your best bet is to talk to someone at guest are there, services. Are there any questions that aren't about lost and found? <laughs> do the pools have hours? Uh, I, I do not know the posted hours per se. The pools do have to be closed at a certain point each evening because they have to put in chemicals that need however long overnight to steep or whatever they do. Uh, so at a certain point they will cover the various pools and or hot tubs with netting. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when those hours are. I would say any time after 10, I would bet there probably won't be a pool available. Although they, the, the hot tubs, there will at least be at least one hot tub open at some point 24 hours a day. Not the same one obviously, but there will never be a completely shut down hot tub system. One of them will always be open, but the pools, generally speaking, later in the evening until morning, they'll, they'll be covered with netting and inaccessible. And they sometimes, they will shut them down if the seas are very rough and they're sloshing. Yeah. But you, you can usually find the pool. Yeah. What's well, happening? Back, back, back on the balcony. Way back in the balcony. Where's our in joke? Where's our in joke? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got one here in my pocket. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the, this cruise is kind of famous for every year something ends up being the reference that gets bandied about. Survey time. Okay. Survey time. Well, there you go. You guys all now have the in joke that the, all the experienced cruisers don't have. Yeah, that's right. So if, if you're like, if you're you're walking by, you want to see somebody's a fellow orientation year. He's doing. Hey. Hey. Survey time. Survey time. Survey time. <laughs> And then you just like mind eating a whole bunch of sorbet. <laughs> no uh, so yeah, until we decide on another one, if at all, sorbet time is it. Congratulations. Uh, let's see, who else has questions? Oh, no. oh, no. oh yes, thank you right here, and then yes, in the red shirt. Uh, there are, uh, I, I believe that's probably where they're setting up the, the mimosas. I, I was handed a piece of paper and it doesn't say that specifically, but I would guess the, the free champagne and mimosas are on the Lido pool area. Yes. 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 I heard yes. So I, disembodied voice said yes. Yep. So we believe it. <laughs> yep. Oh, there will also be, yeah, the bar on the back deck, uh, the, 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 the CV bar will also have them there. In the second front row. Oh, yeah. yes. That's awesome, yes. Yes, when you just go inside your, the, the door of your stateroom, uh, there's a little slot where you put your key in that will let you activate the lights and TV and such within your, your stateroom. Uh, you just leave your key in there until you leave. And if, like I have already done today, you accidentally leave your key in there when you get leave the room, just go down to the, the 
guest services desk and they can either get you another key or someone can let you into your state room. Thank you for that reminder. That, is that was great. <laughs> you can also apparently use any card shaped like this. Let's test it, shall we? Or press some Skittles really thin. <laughs> yeah. yeah, someone on the aisle. What's that? Wrap your lanyard around the door handle? Oh, there you go, yep. Okay, so yeah, if you put your lanyard, yep, and that's a very good point. Wrap, wrap your lanyard around the door handle if it's connected to your key, you will never forget your key. Just note it's quite hackable. Yes. Oh, oh, yes, there's, yeah, a, there's a little sharing. There's sort of the take a penny, leave a penny kind of table that we have. Where is that Gosh, set up I, this I, year? I do not I want to say it's in the atrium year. near the uh, info desk. Certainly you can ask at the info desk and, and there would be that is, that is my best guess at Vegas memory, but that should be correct. And was there another question on the aisle here? No? Okay. No? Uh, I have it right down here. Oh, yes. Yeah, you. Is there anywhere kiddos should not go? Uh, the way we like to describe our, certainly all our official events, they are open to all ages. Not all the content may be entirely family friendly. That is up to you as a parent and them as a kid how badly they want to hear swear words. <laughs> We, you know, it's not like a stream of constant filth, but there may be occasional adult themes and or a few cuss words here and there, but... And there's certainly no, no areas of the ship. That yeah, there's no specific, you know, Joko Cruise After Dark events that you should absolutely avoid. Um, any other questions over here, up there, over there, down there, up there? I we were, we were really thorough. Going once, I think one. Up here. Oh, I, oh, you know one up here. Okay, go ahead. Is there any way to get a PC on that nice, fast internet? Is there any way to get a PC on the nice, fast internet? Well, as in, if you do not have your own computing device, is there one available to you that has faster internet? Oh, uh, you, you should be able to get, yes, the, um, there's, in the directions, if you go to navigate, uh, give me a second to look at it, you go to, it's like navigator.hollandamerica.com well, or something. While you look that up, there's another question over here. Yes. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, um, put your, if, if you don't want to connect to cellular at sea, which is very expensive, uh, and, um, Put your phone, yeah. Put your phone in um, in any air, not airplane mode, but where you're not getting all of the instant downloads. Yeah, you can pause that. That will definitely, well, it'll save the yeah, network. Set sure. airplane mode and also turn off your automatic app updates that, because that, that really drags on the on the uh, throughput. And yes, it is navigator.hollandamerica.com that basically takes you to a web version of the Navigator app, and from there you should be able to log in to the internet on your, on any laptop. Uh, up top, or are you just stretching? You're stretching, great. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 353, we got a little time, but otherwise, thank you ever so much for coming on Joko Cruise. It's gonna be an awesome, awesome week. And we'll see you at the first show or late show, depending on which team you're on. Yeah. Have a good time.